WWDC 2022 is already official and it is happening on June the 6th, so around two months from now. So let's take a look at not five, not ten, uh, but nine major things to expect. But first, let's take a look at the invite, as Apple is known to leave hints in these as to what they would be announcing next. This year, the invite is simply a Swift logo. In case you're not familiar with what Swift is, it is Apple's own programming language. This is what's being used for developing iOS and macOS apps. And the invite definitely points towards a big update for it, which alongside a tagline call to code, uh, tells us that WWC 2022 would be one of the most developer-focused events yet. Now, when it comes to the actual products, uh, given the invite, the most obvious ones are Swift 6.0 and Xcode 14, to which I'm going to give a 100% chance of happening uh, to both. We've never actually had any leaks on these in the past, um, so I would assume that they would both come with new features and APIs for developers and hopefully some more supported platforms too. It would be so great to get Xcode on, you know, Windows, as that would allow developers to build iOS apps without access to an actual Mac or expensive virtualization tools. On top of this, Swift Playgrounds 4.0 lets you literally build full iOS apps on the iPad, so I wouldn't be surprised if we get a full version of Xcode on the iPad this year. The next thing that I expect to see are of course updates to iOS, iPadOS, macOS, watchOS, and the most exciting one, tvOS, to which I'm also going to give a 100% chance of happening. One of the biggest changes set to come with iOS 16 um, is set to be bigger widgets. Ones that allow us to even have a control center widget on the screen, as well as a timer and HomeKit controls. All of this sounds great, as you could have uh, two pages full of widgets, and then of course you would have your apps in the app drawer. However, I do wish that Apple gave us the option to rename uh, the automatic app drawer folders or even reposition the apps inside of them. Oh, sorry, uh, app library. <laughs> App drawer is on Android. But yes, I would love to have the ability to just use the widgets and then have a separate place that is organized by me for all of my apps. Another big new iOS 16 feature is said to be uh, added support for the upcoming emergency satellite features uh, with the iPhone 14. Now, when it comes to iPadOS, macOS, watchOS, and of course, tvOS, we've had zero leaks and rumors on any of them. We just know that they're coming, and any major new features in iOS would likely be translated to iPadOS and maybe even macOS. Okay, now let's talk about something more exciting, which is hardware releases. We don't always see hardware at WWDC, but this year we've had some leaks that do point towards some potential products. With the biggest one being the Studio Display Pro to which I'm giving a 90% chance of happening. But hold on, Daniel, Apple has literally just released the Studio Display, so how come they're already launching a newer model? Well, the main reason being um, Russ Young, who still has a 100% track record on this very day, and he reported that Apple is working on a brand new 27-inch mini LED display that would launch in June. So essentially, this new display would sit in between the Studio Display and the Pro Display XDR. Uh, this would be the mid-range <laughs> $2,000. Uh, option. It won't have 120Hz ProMotion just because reaching 120Hz in 5K is still a challenge, but I do believe that it would be using the exact same chassis as the Studio Display. I did think that the Studio Display was far too thick, thicker than the M1 iMac, despite only being a monitor rather than a full display. Now, that thickness would make more sense for a mini LED display, um, which does require more space, as well as active cooling, which we all know that a CO display does actually have. It has uh, two fans. And with that same body as the CO display, uh, the only main difference would be the mini LED backlight, to which Ross Young predicts that it would have two times as many dimming zones compared to the Pro Display XDR and seven times more total backlight LEDs. I do believe that this display would cost anywhere between $2,500 and $3,000. So yeah, it won't be cheap by any means. Of course, another option is for the Studio Display Pro to actually be the new iMac Pro. However, since Apple has constantly promoted this new Mac Studio as the 27-inch iMac replacement, I just don't see them launching the iMac Pro anytime soon. By the way, I have been testing the Studio Display daily for about three weeks now, and the full review is coming out next week. It's gonna be super detailed with color accuracy, uh, brightness levels, and everything regarding my experience with using that monitor. So definitely subscribe. To see that. And with this, we should also see a brand new Pro Display XDR, to which I'm also going to give a 90% chance of happening. So, still 32 inches in size, still 6K in resolution, but now with a full mini LED backlight for even more dimming zones. At number five, we have the new Mac Pro. But before that, I want to show you something truly useful. 
This is Clean My Mac X, our sponsor for this video, and it's a tool that I've been using for the past nine years to keep my Mac running fast. So let me quickly show you how to use it. The first thing that you see is the Smart Scan feature, where Clean My Mac X will run a number of tasks to speed up your system with the press of a button. And if you want to dive deeper, you can. For example, in the cleanup panel, I can easily clear up junk files from apps, and I can get over five gigabytes back. In the protection panel, I can not only scan for malware, but also easily disable the privacy permission of each individual app. The speed panel allows me to disable login items, run maintenance scripts, re-index spotlight, repair disk permissions, and so much more to speed up my system. The application panel lets me fully uninstall apps by removing every single trace of them, even those that are not from the app store, as well as remove app extensions. And then the files panel gives us the space lens that shows me a bird's eye view of the biggest files on my system to quickly clear up space. Check out Clean on Mac X by using the link below. And now, back to the video. I'm going to give the Mac Pro an 80% chance of happening as Mark Gurman has reported that Apple would be launching some new Macs in either May or June. Uh, June is when WWC is, so uh, this seems to be the most likely option. On top of this, a mysterious leaker, a Bob on Twitter, he also stated that the Mac Pro would be launching at WWC and that, interesting enough, its chip would not be part of the M1 or the M2 family. Now, of course, that I wouldn't just believe a random person called Bob on Twitter, right? Especially when Bob appeared out of nowhere. However, um, he appeared a few hours before the March Apple event, and he tweeted the name of the CEO display correctly, and that uh, it won't have mini LED backlight. He also tweeted the Mac CEO name alongside the higher end M1 chip inside of it, which ended up being the M1 Ultra. And what we know about this new Mac Pro so far is that it would have two M1 Ultras inside. So that would bring it up to a 40 core CPU, up to a 128 core GPU, and uh, up to 256 gigabytes of RAM. Now, Apple stated that with the M1 Ultra, they had completed the M1 family. We're adding one last chip to the M1 family, and it's gonna blow your mind which did make me wonder how this new chip inside the Mac Pro would be called. My initial assumption was M1 Ultra Duo, um, but like Bob mentioned, Apple might give it an entirely new name altogether. At number four, we have Apple's M2 chip. This has been rumored for quite some time now, and we might finally see it at this WWDC. Leaker Bob did say that this won't happen, but since Mark Gurman reported that we'll be seeing Macs, so at plural, in May or June, uh, this does point to me that we might see something more than just the new Mac Pro. And to get another new Mac, we of course need that M2 chip, to which I'm going to give a 50% chance of happening. I'm saying 50% because if Apple allocates too much time at the event talking about uh, the new software and uh, the new Mac Pro, then I don't believe there's gonna be enough time left to also introduce the M2 chip. Of course, that if we do get the M2 chip, we would also get some brand new devices to go alongside it. The MacBook Air is the most likely option. Uh, you can check our dedicated video on it right here, which features our own 3D concept as to how we imagine this thing to look like. So do check that video out to learn more. Um, I'm personally going to give the MacBook Air the same 50% chance of happening as it really does depend on that introduction of the M2 chip. And the same thing goes to the M2 MacBook Pro. We've heard rumors that this would simply be just a 13 inch with the M2 chip inside. However, I do believe that it would be a 14 inch chassis in order for Apple to keep the design language consistent across all the MacBooks. We've also made a detailed video about this one too here. And at number one, uh, we have the most exciting announcement by far, which is Apple's VR headset. Now I'm going to give this one a fairly low 10% chance of happening. Um, and the only reason why I even put it on this list is because we have had some leaks that were pointing towards it being unveiled at this WWDC. Now, it won't be released at WWDC, uh, only in late 2022 or even in 2023, this being the most likely option, uh, but because this is such a new product, Apple will need to give developers all the tools they need to start making apps for it. So an early announcement will be crucial here. And this will be Apple's biggest product since the introduction of the iPhone, as it will kickstart an entirely new era for Apple. You'll be able to use it for games, for fitness, for AR apps. This thing will be insane. And given Apple's experience with augmented reality so far, I do believe that this headset will become very popular in the workplace too. And of course, we've also done a couple of detailed videos on this headset as well. But yeah, let me know in the comments what product are you excited for the most and definitely subscribe if you wanna see our upcoming video on that rumored 15 inch MacBook Air. I'm Daniel, this has been Zenoftech and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenoftech, signing out. Cheers.